Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson, and uh, this is Business One, and we're now on Chapter 5 with How to Form a Business. Uh, as we go through Chapter 5, these are our learning objectives. They are to compare uh, the advantages and disadvantages of a sole proprietorships, describe the differences between general and limited partners, uh, and compare the advantages and disadvantages of partnerships. Compare the advantages and disadvantages of corporations, define and give examples of the three types of corporate mergers, outline the advantages and disadvantages of franchise, and explain the role of cooperatives, right? So we're talking about the different types of businesses that you can start or be a part of. Uh, if you, have to, you have to know and understand what's best for you and also what's best for, uh, for the company that you work for. All right, so I want you guys to, uh, to check out the story on uh, on Anne, she's actually uh, the founder of Auntie Anne's uh, Pretzels, right? So check out that that great story. Uh, it's always great if you could find something that you love uh, to uh, to to have that to be your job. It will make work seem like uh, something fun and interesting, as opposed to something that you have to go to, as opposed to something that you want to go to. Uh, so we'll talk about the basic forms of business. Uh, Starting with right over here, a sole proprietorship is a business that is owned and usually managed by one person. So think about it like this. Uh, you know, if I if I have a liquor store, more than likely, uh, you know, I, I'm the one person that owns it. I'm probably the one person that manages it. Uh, if somebody else manages it, maybe your family. But, you know, think about the disadvantages before we get to them is that you can't take a vacation. The advantage is that you keep all the cash and you work for yourself, make your own hours. If you want to just shut the liquor store down. Uh, you, you can because you don't belong to uh, you know a corporation or a franchise where you have to follow their leader their rules. Uh, you have a partnership, a legal form of business with two or more owners, right? So if it's one person, it's a sole prop. If it's two or more, if it's two, three, or infinity, it could be a partnership, all right? So uh, you have two people, it could be a partnership. You have three people, it could be a partnership. Uh, there are different types of partnership. If you have a general partnership, that means at least one person has to be a general partner. They have to have unlimited liability. Uh, and a, a limited partner is an individual who doesn't have liability beyond the, uh, the money that they invest. A corporation is a legal entity with authority to act and have liability apart from its owners. Uh, I work for a corporation, uh, so uh, this is a little bit different than having a, um, a, a, a general partnership or a limited partnership or a sole, a sole proprietorship. But what's very interesting here, if you look down at the graphs, all right, so the percentage of businesses, 72% of the businesses are sole proprietorships, 20% are corporations, and 8% are partnerships. But when you talk about how much money is being made, of you know, the total receipts, 81% of the money is being made by corporations, 6% by sole props, and 13% by partnership. It's the exact opposite. Uh, which which makes sense because when we get into you know what are the advantages and disadvantages of having a corporation then you'll see some of the things as to why they can be so big so in looking at the advantages and disadvantages of sole proprietorship before we get into that uh, you see the definition over here which you do need to know unlimited liability that's the responsibility of business owners for all of the debts of the business so if you have a sole proprietorship that means you the one individual you are responsible for all of the business debts right uh, you can think of it as an advantage or a disadvantage, however you want to take it. But all of those, you know, you know, those liabilities are yours. So some of the advantages of a sole prop: uh, ease of starting and ending business is really easy, easy to start a sole proprietorship. Uh, being your own boss, like I said, you could be your own boss. You can open, you can close, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but if you want to be successful, you probably want to do the right thing, right? Uh, pride of ownership, right? So people who own and manage their own business are rightfully proud of their work. They deserve all the credit for taking the risks and providing uh, the needed goods or services. You're going to leave a legacy. Owners can have an ongoing business for future generations. I've done with my liquor store. Now I'm going to leave it down to my son. Uh, retention of company profits. Uh, owner uh, not only keeps the profits earned, but also benefit from the increasing value of the business uh, as it grows. And uh, no special taxes. So no special taxes for a sole prop. So those are the advantages of uh, having a sole proprietorship. Now, there are, of course, in anything, there are advantages and there are disadvantages. So disadvantages, unlimited liability. Uh, so you have risk of personal losses. So if they come and they're looking to, you know, take some things from you, they're coming to take a house, they're coming to take a car, they're coming to take a lot of things uh, that are your personal items. Uh, maybe they don't have to do with your business, but that is a collateral that you put up for your business. Uh, number two, limited financial resources. You don't have a lot of backing unless it's, you know, your Uncle Sal 
uh, that gives you a little bit of money. Uh, you know, so you have to go to a bank if you need some funds. It's not like a corporation where you could just issue stock and uh, people purchase the stock and then you have money to invest in uh, research and development and technology. Uh, management difficulties. All businesses need management. Someone must keep inventory, accounting, and tax records. So you have to be a jack of all trades, right? Uh, but like they say, jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, so, you know, you have to be able to do every little thing, but uh, a lot of times you don't master those, those small things, which can hurt you in the long run. Overwhelming time commitment. Like I said, you know, you want to go on vacation? Not going to happen. You got to stay there. You got to man the store uh, for forever unless you find somebody trusty. And then the thing is like, hey, are they stealing profits from you? Are they stealing money out of the register? I mean, you, you just don't know. So um, it, you have to think about what type of lifestyle you want to live with that as well. A uh, few fringe benefits. So at my job, you know, I have vacation. I have sick time. Uh, you don't have that liquor store, right? I don't care if you have the flu. You still got to get up and open up the shop or you're not going to make any money. Uh, limited growth, right? Uh, growth potential uh, is, is not uh, huge in a sole proprietorship and a limited lifespan uh, when you pass away or when whoever you uh, pass it on to passes away, then that, that's it pretty much for the sole proprietorship. Uh, test prep, make sure that you go over that because those things will help you uh, on your upcoming tests. A uh, general partnership, a partnership in which all owners uh, share uh, in operating the business and in assuming liability for the business's debts, right? So that means you're a partner, I'm a partner, we have uh, unlimited liability together. Uh, so that's just a general partnership. Uh, a limited partnership, a little bit different, a partnership in which one or more of the general partners and has one or more general partners and one or more limited partners. So the limited partners is I've invested my ten thousand dollars. That's it. If the bank, if the the company goes belly up, then uh, then I just lost my ten thousand dollars. But they're not coming after my house and my car. They're coming after your property. Uh, general partner and owner or partner who has unlimited liability and is active in managing the firm. A limited partner and owner who invests money in the business but does not have any management responsibility or liability for losses beyond their investment. Uh, limited liability, you should obviously be able to know what that is now, but I'll read it anyway. Responsibility of a business owner uh, for losses only up to the amount that they invest. Limited partners and shareholders, stockholders uh, have limited liability. All right, so. Uh, and then LLP is a limited liability partnership, which is very, very popular, especially here in California. A uh, partnership that limits partners' risk of losing their personal assets to only their own uh, acts and omissions and, uh, acts, uh, and, and to the acts and omissions of people under their supervision, right? So only you and uh, the people who you supervise uh, can, you know, cause you detrimental debt in that situation. So let's talk about the advantages of a partnership. Uh, more financial resources. So if I bring 50000 to the table and you bring 50000 to the table, we now have 100000 If I was going in it by myself, I'd only have $50,000 in terms of financial resources. Uh, shared management and pooled uh, complementary skills and knowledge. I'm sure that if I'm good in accounting and you're good in marketing, we'll do better if we're together. But if I'm good in accounting and I don't have you, then my marketing may suffer. Uh, so, you know, you have pooled resources. Everybody's not good at everything. Uh, but, uh, but you know, if you pull some people together, you can get a pretty good company. Uh, questions to ask when uh, choosing a business partner, right? So if you're going into business, and a lot of you guys, you know, have aspirations of, you know, be very careful who you go into business with, uh, you know, especially if you're your friends, family, things of that nature, you, you know, do your due diligence. Uh, but these are some questions that you need to ask. So I want you to go over these questions on your own, but make sure you ask those questions uh, when you're going into business with someone. Um, more advantages, long survival for a partnership, right? So one person leaves, you can get a new partner, uh, works great. No special taxes as well, just like a sole proprietorship. Now, of course, there are some disadvantages to a partnership. Unlimited liability, right? So, uh, you know, you, you general partner, you're going to have unlimited liability just like uh, in a sole proprietorship. If you're a limited partner, it's just like, hey, I lost my money, wash my hands, I'm going on to the next thing. Uh, division of profit. So although you bring... $50,000 extra, and you also bring those marketing skills, uh, I have to share half the money with you, which I'm not too happy about. And disagreements among partners, uh, you know, I want to paint the building purple, you want to paint it pink, we disagree, you know, what do we do? Uh, maybe if it's just two partners, we always just go with the method of flipping a coin. Uh, difficulty of termination, uh, once you have committed yourself to a partnership, it's not easy to get out of it, so, you know, it can be difficult to, to terminate. Uh, out, of a, out of a partnership, especially don't have a good solid partnership agreement. Uh, and this says, uh, I want you to read this as well, how to form a partnership. So there are questions that you need to ask people before forming a partnership, and this is how to actually go about 
uh, forming a partnership. So I want you to make sure that you read that as well. These are good things. Yes, they're great for the book, but they're also good things to know in real life and use your common sense to um, you know, do what's, what's best for you and what's necessary uh, for your success in the business world. I want you to also read Good uh, Business, Bad Karma, talking about uh, uh, making ethical business decisions. And, of course, go over your test prep uh, right here so that you do great on your test. A lot of you guys have been doing very, very well uh, on your tests and quizzes. Uh, conventional corporation or a C corp. So anytime you see conventional, it could be, even not could be, it's, it's a C corporation. Uh, a state chartered legal entity with authority to act and have liability separate from its owner. So the liability, it doesn't fall on its owners. Corporate falls, go belly up. It, they're not coming and take your house, your cars, or anything else, right? The, the corporation is a separate entity. Uh, but, you know, that's how does it get to be a separate entity? Because you got a lot of money to form a corporation, things of that nature, which we'll talk about. So the advantages of a corporation, you have limited liability. Major advantage of a corporation is the limited liability of their owners. Remember, limited liability means that the owners of a business are responsible only for the losses up to the amount they invest in. So if I buy a bunch of stock in the company, I'm only on the hook for that. And if it goes belly up and it's gone, then I just lost the money that I invested. And that's it. Uh, not that I want to, but that's better than losing my house or my car. Ability to raise more money uh, for investment. To raise money, a corporation can sell uh, shares of its stock to anyone who is interested, right? Great way to make money, like I said, for research and development and uh, technology. Uh, size. Uh, size summarizes the advantages of some corporations because they can raise large amount of money uh, to work with uh, big corporations, you know, factories, things of that nature, right? You can raise a bunch of money. Uh, you know, you'll be quicker to market. You can make more widgets than I can. Uh, and you'll make more money than I can because I don't have a big, you know, financial backing. Uh, corporate types. So corporations can fit uh, in more than one category. One should be sure to read that uh, as well. Uh, perpetual life. Because corporations are separate from those who own them, the death of one or more owners does not terminate the corporation, right? It's just somebody else has shares. Somebody else will purchase their shares. Uh, ease of ownership change. Just sell the shares, right? Who's in charge, right? The person who owns uh, you know, like 51% of the shares, right? They're, they're, they're in charge. They've got the most voting power. Uh, number six, ease of attracting talented employees, right? You got a corporation. Like I said, I work for a corporation. It's easy for me to say, man, you know, I would really like to go work there because uh, I know it's a great solid uh, company, uh, maybe even somewhere that you can, you know, stay for the rest of your life. Uh, separation of ownership from management. Uh, corporations are able to raise money from different owners, stockholders without getting them involved. In management which is a great thing when you have that that type of separation at least for them uh, disadvantages of corporations uh, in, initial costs and corporation may cost thousands of dollars and require expensive lawyers and accountants so you know cost a little, little bit more than uh, you know creating a sole proprietorship but that's how it goes because your money-making potential is a lot larger as well uh, and um, how owners can affect management I want you to read this little blurb right here as well uh, very interesting very beneficial uh, to what really goes on uh, B corporations less sustainability sale. I want you to, to check that out. Also, right, a lot of good reading. Uh, extensive paperwork. If you want to form a corporation, you're gonna to have to do a lot of paperwork. Uh, double taxation. Uh, you know, to get double uh, taxed uh, when it's talked about corporate. So corporate income is taxed twice. First, the corporation pays tax on the income before it can distribute to any as dividends to stockholders. Then the stockholders pay tax on the dividends they receive. Right. So they get taxed on it. Then I get taxed on it. On, on the dividends that I receive as well. Uh, two tax returns, uh, another disadvantage. The size can be an advantage, but it can also be a disadvantage. Large corporations sometimes become uh, very inflexible, a lot of you know red tape. Um, difficulty of termination. Once a corporation has started, it's relatively hard to, to end. It's like, hey, it's there uh, for forever. And you can also have possible conflict uh, with stockholders and board of directors. So conflict may brew the stockholder get uh, elect a board of directors who disagree with management, right? So who who's really in charge? Is it the you know board of directors? Is it management? It, it, it can be tough. It can become a tough uh, and sticky situation. But read more there uh, to learn about it. Just like you know, for instance, Steve Jobs he got kicked out of his own company. Uh, that those those things happen. I mean, he came back, but you know they definitely happen. Um, so here's the process of forming corporation, uh, how to incorporate right there. I want you to read that. Some of you guys have, uh, you know, future aspirations of creating a corporation. Uh, S corporation is a unique government creation that looks like a corporation, but is taxed like a sole proprietorship and or a partnership, which is great. Isn't that perfect? I want to have, you know, be big like a corporation, but I want to be taxed little like a, a sole proprietorship or a, or a corporation or a partnership. I'm sorry. Uh, but 
there are a few things that you have to have to qualify. So it has to have uh, no more than 100 shareholders, uh, have shareholders that are individual or states and who are citizens of per permanent residents of the United States, uh, have only one class of stock, right? It can't be a stock for, you know, managers and stock for, you know, lower level employees. Uh, can derive no more than 25% of income from passive sources, uh, passive sources such as rents, royalties, and interest, right? So those are the criteria if you want to escort. Uh, I already talked about limited liability company earlier, uh, but make sure that you, uh, you know, know the criteria there. Uh, we'll discuss it. So um, advantages, uh, personal assets are protected. Uh, number two, uh, your advantage is that you have a choice of taxation, right? That, that always finds what works best for you. Uh, flexible ownership rules, flexible distribution of profits and losses, operating flexibility. So a lot of, uh, you know, good reasons to, to, to have a limited liability corporation, just like a limited liability company. Uh, disadvantages, no stock, right? So LLC ownership is non-transferable. LC members need the approval of the other members in order to sell their interest in the company. So that's a big disadvantage, um, lacks fl uh, flexibility in that regard. Uh, limited lifespan, uh, they're required to identify dissolution dates in the articles of organization, no more than 30 years in some states. Uh, they have fewer incentives, unlike uh, corporations, LLCs can't deduct the cost of fringe benefits. Uh, taxes, uh, LLC members must pay self-employment taxes. And paperwork, while the paperwork is cried of the LLC, is not great. That uh, uh, is not as great as was required for the corporation. So you know, yeah, it's a negative, but it's not as negative in terms of you know how much paperwork you have to fill out if you have a big corporation. Uh, test prep, be sure to go over that. It will help you to di and direct you towards the things that you definitely need to know. Uh, comparison of forms of business ownership, uh, be sure to uh, review this entire page. Uh, you know, documents that need to start, ease of termination length of life so if you're about to start a business you need to look right at that and see you know what's best for me what works best for you know the company that i want to to put into play uh you know and it may, maybe it helps you learn more about the company that you currently work for uh so a few more terms of uh, the merger this is a result of two firms uh forming one company right so we got two companies and you know they say hey we want to marry we want to get together we know we can do great things um, acquisition is one company's purchase of the property and obligation of another company. So I'm going to purchase, you know, uh, your company and all obligations that they have. Uh, but it's not like the merger. The merger is like, hey, we're equals. Let's get together. The acquisition is like, hey, I got a lot of money. You're running out of money. We're going to buy you, and uh, you know, uh, and then we're going to continue to do good business. Uh, vertical merger is the joining of two companies involved in different stages of related business, right? So. Uh, if I sell bikes and you sell tires for bikes and then we, you know, we merge, then that's that's companies uh, related different stages of business. Horizontal merger, the joining of two firms in the same industry, right? Maybe we're in the same industry. Uh, I sell soda, you sell a different type of soda and we go ahead and merge and just, you know, create a vast empire of different, you know, uh, sodas that people can buy. A conglomerate merger, uh, the joining of firms in uh, completely unrelated industries, right? So uh, you sell pillows and I sell uh, hammers and we just we join together for whatever reason. Uh, you know, I don't know, maybe some of the resources that, you know, that we have or maybe have some people that, you know, got together and say, hey, you know, let's make hammers and pillows. I, I don't know. But um, but we're totally unrelated and that's what that would be. So horizontal, here are a couple of examples. So a soft drink company buys a mineral uh uh, mineral water company. They're in the same industry, right? The industry of drinks, but uh, but they're not the same type of drink. Um, then you have a vertical merger. Soft drink company buys artificial sweetener company because they need their artificial sweetener to put in there. And then you have conglomerate. So soft drink company buys a, a snack food company. Maybe it's just like, hey, we want to bundle things together. We want to sell those soft drinks and those chips all in one bundle because we know you need it while you're sitting there watching uh, college football on Saturday and uh, NFL football football on Sunday. Um, check out leverage buyout on your own. Let's talk about franchises. So a franchise agreement, agreement whereby someone uh, with a good idea for a business sells the rights to use a business name and sell a product or services to others in a given territory, right? So just like Subway, uh, some places are not uh, franchises that you think are, right? Like uh, in and outs not a franchise, neither Starbucks. Uh, but but there are a lot out there, right? So you know, Subway's uh, definitely a you know big time franchise. So it's McDonald's. Uh, but the franchise agreement says, hey, you know, you're gonna pay us this amount of money, 
and we're going to give you this, especially and the biggest thing is the advertising. So if I own a subway and, uh, you know, I'm, you know, on, you know, the corner of Vermont and a subway ad is, is running all throughout Los Angeles, then that's, you know, that's that's helping me. It's benefiting me because no matter where somebody lives there in that area, they're like, oh, yeah, I saw that subway commercial, got a meatball sandwich for this amount. I'm going to go ahead and go to subway. Uh, so that's why you pay your franchise fees, which we'll get into. Uh, franchisor is the um, company that develops a product concept and sells the others rights to make this or sell the product. So Subway would be the franchisor. If you bought a Subway, you would be the franchisee. Uh, the right to use a specific uh, business's name and sell its products or services in a given territory. A uh, franchisee is a person who buys the franchise, right? And you see, there are a lot of, you know, uh, here, here's some down there, best known, McDonald's, Jiffy Lube, 7-Eleven, Weight Watchers, Holiday Inn. Some of those are great. Uh, have great business models and they continue to, to work and flourish uh, in the United States. Um, so advantages of franchises, management and marketing assistance, right? You got marketing assistance and plus it's a proven business model. You know it works. Uh, two is personal ownership. So although you're not taking all the risks, you still have personal ownership. You do own it. Uh, it's just a franchise and you have to pay a certain fee. Nationally recognized name, right? Everybody knows who Subway is. Everybody knows who McDonald's is. I want to see how you can open McDonald's and not have sales. Uh, buying a franchise, so uh, you know, I want you to, to review this, and this is a good one because everybody, you know, you know, if you get going to a business, if it's just off scratch on the top of your head, sometimes it can be tough. Buying a franchise is definitely a, a legitimate option that you, that you have there. So there's a checklist, there's some questions that you need to ask in terms of uh, what you need, want, need to do when you're buying a franchise. Uh, number four, financial advice and assistance, right? They'll provide that as well. They want you to do good so you can continue to pay them that franchise fee. That's why they want you to do good. And lower failure rate. Uh, you know, it's a lower failure rate if you have a franchise. So think about it. Is it, is it likely that a McDonald's will fail? Is it likely that a Subway will fail? Uh, building box of franchising. Uh, I want you to read that as well. Disadvantage of franchises. Uh, large startup costs, right? So, you know, you have to fork out some money. Uh, shared profit. Uh, franchisor often demands either a large share or profits in addition to startup costs. So they're going to need some of that money. They're going to need that check every month. Uh, management regulations, right? So there's certain things like if you, you're on a subway, you can't say, hey, you know, I'm going to sell, sell my cousin's paintings in, in my subway. It doesn't work like that. Or I'm going to sell, you know, I'm going to sell onions, a bag of onions instead of, uh, instead of the bag of apples, right? It doesn't work like that. You need to sell what is prescribed by them and what they say you need to. Coattail effects. So there goes one right there. Subway, something bad happens to Subway or sub, somebody who works for Subway that's very popular or famous, then it can have a ripple effect or a coattail effect on your company. Uh, restrictions on selling, uh, that's also, uh, you know, can be a problem just like I talked about. And fraudulent franchisers. So most franchises are not large systems like McDonald's and Subway. Many are small or rather obscure companies. Uh, so, you know, you can have some, uh, you know, some fraudulent activity uh, going on there as well. Oops, went a little too far. Uh, diversity and franchising. You just go ahead. You'll read over that. Uh, Home-based franchises. Uh, uh, it, it's good. I got a, I have a video that I'm gonna post in there that talks about these, you know, very unlikely businesses uh, that you, you know, want to check out. Uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting. It never crossed my mind until I saw it. Uh, E-commerce and franchising, right? So, you know, obviously, as people do more businesses over the internet, there, there would be more of that. You know, even common sense. Uh, giving entrepreneurs options with a digital franchising, definitely check that out. There may be some options in there that, that you would like. So always be thinking, you know, have an entrepreneur spirit. Be thinking about uh, possible businesses that you could go into. Uh, read this about franchising and global markets as well. Uh, Holiday Inn, all the way over in Amsterdam. Cooperative, uh, like um, a business is owned and controlled by the people who use it, producers, consumers, or workers with similar needs who pool their resources uh, for mutual gain. I'll read that as well. Uh, you can see that in a lot of times uh, they have them or have them with, uh, you know, with farms, electric uh, cooperatives, things of that nature. Uh, so which ownership is for you? I don't know, right? Uh, you have to figure out which one is for you. And that's why you read this chapter and do your research. More uh, test prep, definitely go over those. And that is the end of chapter five. So be sure to go over the summary, summarize everything up, put a nice little bow, put it in your brain and keep it there. Be ready for your quest or tests and or uh, quizzes that you will have uh, pertaining to uh, chapter five. So uh, that's it for this week. I want you guys to uh, be sure to read the lecture, do your quizzes, do your homework assignment. Uh, have a good day and always uh, have a good week.